In last class, we have handled the <coughs> some properties of the solution, particularly binary uh, binary solution. But when we handle the binary solution, solution when we, in particular when we handle the solution, we we have to consider much more things than when we consider the uh, free energy in single component, what, what was the particular things when we consider the solution, thermodynamics of solution. It was a free energy of mixing, and it comes from the change in enthalpy and entropy during the mixing process. And I already uh, introduced you, introduced you, there is two hypothetical solution uh, which is introduced to evaluate the free energy of entropy, uh, mixing of enthalpy and mixing of entropy. One is ideal solution and the other is regular solution. And in ideal solution, we assume that there is no change in enthalpy by mixing, but we consider the change in entropy by assuming the random mixing, right? And in regular solution, we consider the change in enthalpy of mixing, but very in very simple way by considering the by considering the difference in the number of bond and the difference in bond energy. And also in regular solution we evaluate the enthalpy change, entropy change of mixing by random uh, mixing. And rest of the class, I fail to drive. <laughs> so I, I practice. So I hope this, in this time, I will succeed. You already know that, that the configuration of mixing, the number of configuration, when you mix these two solutions, number of A atom is N, A and number of B atom is MB, is given by this one. So mix is 2N S1. And just we consider the configuration of mixing, and this is no and by Steering's approximation, we can write okay. here the Steering's approximation is that log step approximately log n minus n. Is it correct? So we consider the one mole of the system. So this should be equivalent to the Avogadro number, and this also equivalent to Avogadro number. And N A is N B is this is also.
then we pull this one please let me know if I goes in wrong way usually the driving the equation in the dot book and uh, in the note and driving the equation in the board is quite different <laughs> quite different <laughs> This term goes to this two term, and this one to two goes this two term. Right? So when you look at this one, it will be cancelled out. All right? Because xa and xb, when we add it to xa and xb, it goes to unit, right? So finally, we, oh, I forgot K. Finally, we obtain K and A. A plus X A plus X B X B. So this is R okay. okay. So from this one when we Think about the change of the keep free energy after mixing. It is free energy of mixing is given by in ideal solution. So we have finally this relationship. Okay. So next one is regular solution. In regular solution, as I mentioned, we assume random mixing. But we consider the difference in bonding energy and the change of the number of bonding before and after mixing. So because we assume the random mixing between A and B atom, the change of entropy will be the same with uh, to the uh, ideal solution okay so uh, we don't worry about the change of the entropy because we already have this relationship from the ideal solution the problem is how to evaluate the entropy of mixing it's very simple we will handle the change of entropy very in very simple way and just count the number of bond before and after the mixing process. Finally, we will have this kind of formula in uh, for the change of uh, uh, mix, uh, the 
entropy of mixing, and here PAB is given by uh, the product of Avogadro Ab number and the coordinate number and mole fraction of two atom. And EAB and EAA, EBB represent the bonding energy between AA, BB, and AB atom. Okay, then let's drive how we everyone okay if I erase at first we assume one more of a poem so total number of atom is Na. And this is the summation of N B. No. We consider one more of A and B mixture and the more fraction of A is XA the more fraction of B is XB. Then, before mixing, how many AA bond and BB bond exist? And one more thing is that the coordinate number of A and B atom is Z. Coordinate number means the number of bond per atom. At first, let's drive how many bond exist in the system. Sorry. Three. The number of bonds in the system will be number of atom and per bond per atom divided by two. Because two atoms share one bond. So, this total number of bonds is not changed by mixing process, right? <coughs> so, how many AA bonds? for mixing. Just how many BB is the same? And after mixing, when we mix A and B atom, then how many AA bond in this stem with random mixing condition? It is the same to the to find 
AA, the, the probability to find uh, the probability to find AA bond product with the number bond, right? So, how much is the probability to find AA bond in the mixed system? It is when you pick up one lattice point. How much is the probability to find A bond is XA. And to make A A bond, the neighbor should be A. So this is the probability you can find A A bond in the system. And probability multiplied by total number of bond right right but but the total number of consider the total number of atom is close to Avogadro number, so it is very very big, big number. So it it not really cha uh, changes the probability. And the same thing. How about A B bond? The probability to find A and the probability to find B and also find B and find A. <coughs> so this is So everything is almost done. We then we just count the number. We now have the number of bond, and we just have some calculation considering the bond energy. So, for example, let's let's say the bond energy of A A B A A is E A A, and B B is E B B. And AB is EAB. Then the entropy of mixing. Actually, this is the internal energy because we only count the bond between the atom. And this is. This is the energy from the bond after the mixing. This is the energy from the bond before mixing, right? See? And then we pull two from two.
So here this is minus xb, this is minus xa. So when we write this one, let's say xb in front. Everything is on the, your note, so I think that you don't need to uh, write this. The, the concept is when you consider the entropy change in regular solution, is the basic thing is the, just counting the temperature bond before and after mixing. And the interesting thing is that It can be written down in this simple form, and when you put this is as just epsilon, and then mix is N A C X A X B epsilon and. Here, omega is this value. And actually, when the system is fixed, then Avogadro number, coordinate number, and the difference in the bond energy, which is given by this one, is fixed. So you can evaluate the Entropy of mixing in any composition because this is given by the function of the more fraction of the A and B atom. Okay, so when you consider the entropy change and entropy change, so you can write down the for any change during mixing is given by the entropy change of mixing and the entropy change of mixing. One interesting thing you have to remember is that the sign of this entropy of mixing. It is the sign of entropy of mixing is determined by the sign of omega. And what is omega? This is the number, coordinate number, and the difference in bond energy. So actually the sign of omega is determined by the difference in the bonding energy. So when you look at this one, usually we use the bonding energy as a minus sign. The bond, the energy goes, the, the absolute value of the minus uh, uh, bonding energy goes down, uh, absolute value of bonding energy increase, that the bond is strong bond. So when AV is stronger, then average value of A N and B B, then the epsilon value will have minus sign. Minus sign. Because the bond energy itself is negative. It when it becomes more negative, it is a strong stronger. So when 
AB bond is stronger than the average value of A and BB, then the sign of epsilon is minus, right? It means when, if I'm an A bond, A, A atom, then I would like to have B atom as my neighbor, which means that the two atom would like to more mix to each other. But when the AB bond is weak, then the average value of AA and BB bond, then the sign of E is positive and omega is positive, then the entropy of mixing is positive. In that case, if I'm A atom, I would like to A as my neighbor. So A atom would like to cluster to each other. So you have to remember that the sign of entropy of mixing tell you some information about whether the two atoms would like to eager to mix or separate to uh, form the cluster. Okay? So let's see the effect of the entropy of mixing and entropy of mixing on the overall shape of the free energy curve. Usually, the entropy of mixing is always have a downward probability because from this formula, you can expect that the T, the product of temperature and uh, entropy change is always a negative contribution in evaluating the free energy. So it has this kind of downward, downward, public shape. But the degree of the parabolic to downward is depend on the temperatures. When the contribution of temperature is strong, it means that when you consider the system at high temperature, it grows more deep parabolic. But when you consider the contribution from very low temperatures, the contribution of the entropy is small. Interesting part is that when we can compare two different cases which have dissimilar sign of the omega. When the sign of omega is negative, which means that AA bond is much more strong than the average of AA and BB bond, then the shape of the entropy of mixing goes this like downward shape. So the summation of these two contribution is given by this one. It is the same for this case, which have negative omega value and uh, low temperatures. Most interesting part is that when you consider the omega value is positive and the temperature is low. When the temperature is high enough, then even though the entropy of mixing is 
of world public, the downward public contribution of the entropy compensate all of its effect. So the free energy mixing has this kind of downward public. But when the temperature is not that high, so the contribution from the entropy cannot compensate all of the contribution from the entropy, then let's see, this is the entropy change during mixing, and this is the contribution from the entropy. How the free energy goes if we sum these two parts? It goes sum this kind of W shape. This kind of free energy curve is uh, not that usual, but it is very important to understand the spinodal decomposition we will handle in later class. And usually, we Uh, if the con contribution from the entropy is very high, but usually the free energy curve at the end of composition line always has this kind of minus sign. I will tell the reason why uh, this free energy curve at the end of this composition line has the minus sign. It is because at the end of the composition, the contribution of the entropy goes very, very big compared to the contribution of the entropy. I will show uh, this. In last last slide of this uh, chart. okay, before we move to the uh, to the equilibrium in the heterogeneous phase, I'd like to say some terminology, which is activity, uh, chemical potential activity and activity coefficient. Usually the free energy of one point in the free energy curve is not the linear, com linear combination of its original free energy because of the free energy change during mixing. If the free energy of two mix mixture is located on this straight line, then we can express the free energy of the mixture by these two free energy of the pure A and B. But unfortunately, due to the contribution of the free energy mixing, we cannot express the free energy of the system at this point with linear combination of these two values. But sometimes it is very convenient to express the free energy as a linear combination of the composition. So how we can do it? By defining the chemical potential. Actually, when we consider the system in this position, and there are many ways to express <coughs> the free energy of this position in linear way. But one of that is draw a tangent line passing through this point and get the free energy at each this this axis. 
And then we can express the free energy of this position in the linear combination of the composition. And then we call this mu a, mu b as a chemical potential. Actually, the chemical potential, physically, it represents the contribution of atom A and atom B to the free energy of the mixture. You know that when atom A and atom B exist in pure state, their free energy should be given by this point and this point. Right? But by mixing, by making a solution, their free energy is, seems to decrease by this amount and this amount. So these two values represent the contribution of A and B atom to the total free energy of the solution. So, and when this, when you look at the free energy of pure atom and free energy of A atom in the solution, it decreases. It means that the A atom feel more stable when mix with B atom. Okay? The formal The formal meaning of the chemical potential is given by this one. And consider a large, very large system. And we put very small amount of B atom to the system. As long as the amount of B atom is small, then the increase of free energy of the system is linear relationship with the amount of B atom we put into the system. So we can write down this one. And actually the chemical potential of the B atom is the proportional constant when we consider the relationship between the increase of free energy or increase of the, the amount of B atom. So with this relationship, we can define, this is formal definition of the chemical potential. Chemical potential of B atom is the ratio, rate, uh, no, rate of the increase of free energy with increase of the amount of B atom with constant of P and T and NA, which means that the original system is very large. When the original system is very large, then when we put small amount of B atom, then the increase of the free energy is defined by the chemical potential. In binary system, when you put A or B atom. So the increase of the free energy is given by the linear combination of these two species. And when we put A and B atom, we control the more fraction with this to one more of the system. Then finally, this equation goes to this one, right? When you put an A and B atom, maintaining the ratio of XA and XB. 
to make one more of the system. Then the free energy is given by the linear combination of each chemical potential and the mole fraction of each atom. So this is exactly the same as the concept of chemical potential given by the graphical representation. So one thing you have to remember is that the f chemical potential of the A or B atom in the solution is different from its free energy of pure state because there are, as we mentioned, there are some change in free energy by mixing process. So to take into account those kind of change in free energy, we have to consider the concept of the chemical potential to express the energy of the system in the linear combination of the composition. Okay? When you consider the chemical potential of the A and B atom, a uh, very interesting thing happened. This is the, let's see, this is the free energy curve of the mixture of an A and B, and this, the system is here, our system is here, and the chemical potential of A and B atom is given by this one. Then, let's consider any hypothetical system which is consist of which consists of A and B atom and imagine that the chemical potential of A and B atom is given by this and this one. We when we put this hypothetical phase on the two inter very large amount of our initial phase, then what happened? We put this hypothetical phase, very small hypothetical phase, into very large our original system. Then the free energy of our original system will not change because the free energy of the total mixture is somewhere very close to the original point and it is still located on the free energy of original that is curve of the ordinary system. That is similar when you put the atom B with chemical potential mu A into the system in very large system, very large original system the chemical potential of the original system will not change. That is the definition of the chemical potential. That definition is also can be applied to any position. On the tangent line. Okay? Difficult to understand. But but you have to remember that 
the system, the free energy of the system should be on this tangent line. When you put A and B atom, who of which chemical potential is different to this one, then the total free energy of the system is deviated from this original free energy curve. The only way for the system not deviate from its original free energy curve is that when we put the A and B at with this chemical potential. That is the only way not to not, not deviate the system from its original free energy curve. Okay? Not okay? You have to remember that when you mix two A and B atom, the permitted equilibrium state is only for this free energy curve on the free energy curve. Any state which is not on this free energy curve, for example here, it goes spontaneously goes from this state. And when you look at the molar free energy diagram, the point below this curve is not permitted. Uh, when I see your face, is uh, <laughs> uh, you, you, your face say to me, uh, it's difficult to understand. <laughs> so what, what is the most difficult point to understand? Because this is very important concept when you consider the frame is change during the phase transformation to, for example, to evaluate the driving force in nucleation and those kind of the calculation of driving force, it is very important concept. So I hope you uh, can understand the fully, fully understand the concept of this molar free energy diagram. Actually, the, molar, the understanding of molar free energy diagram is basis to understand many things in calculating the, the driving force or other things in thermodynamics and uh, kinetics. Okay? So, Think about it, and if you have some difficulty to understand it, please visit my office, okay? I will stay one, two, three, right? In, on this Friday, okay? Okay, see you in next Tuesday. And don't forget to submit the homework.